Hello, welcome in this first ABC Florence Nightingale lecture. I'm honored and humbled to be asked to give this lecture. And I was asked to reflect on the role of nursing research in the care for people with congenital heart disease. I dedicate this lecture to all the nurses and the frontline workers who are, since more than one year, are giving the best of themselves in this ongoing pandemic. This one's for you. When thinking about nursing research and the impact on the care for congenital heart disease, I would like to start with a personal story. And let's go back to 1997 almost 25 years ago. I was a junior staff nurse at a cardiac ward and at one of the evenings we were invited to a seminar which was given by Werner Butz. Werner Butz was uh, a young cardiologist, new on staff, and he was hired to set up and establish the adult congenital heart disease program in our hospital. He was talking about transposition of the great arteries, tetralogy of Fallot, Fontans and so on, all terms I never had heard before. But at the end of his presentation he, he concluded uh, his talk with the following quote, these patients do not only need medical care but require an interdisciplinary and multi-professional approach. This was astonishing to me, because at that time, this was the first time that I heard a physician saying that people need more than a physician. And I was um, so astonished to hear this, and at the same time, it also triggered me to learn more about that. So I went to the library, the biomedical library at our university. And these were the days that you had to physically go to the library. It, internet was still in its infancy. And I was looking for hours and days on nursing research in congenital heart disease. What is known? And I came across two names, the name of Mary Canobio and the name of Lisbeth Uttens. Mary Canobio was the first nurse specialist in adult congenital heart disease in the US, if not in the world. She had written seminal papers on the role of nurses and what, what the particular problems and the needs of adult congenital heart disease patients are and what we as nurses can do about it. Then I looked at the work of Lisbeth Uttens. Werner Butz, he was referring to the fact that people have more than medical needs alone. And actually, the work of Lisbeth Uttens was supporting this. She looked at emotional, behavioral problems, uh, psychosocial issues in uh, congenital heart disease. So she was really underpinning the fact that these people need more than medical care because they also have other issues. And after this review in the literature, um, I kind of concluded that this is a wasteland. There is so much to do in this domain. There is so much potential that has to be uh, developed. This will be the domain that I want to work at. This is where I want to contribute to. So the year after, in 1998, um, I started the first studies, rather explorative, together with some master's students. It helped them 
to make a meaningful master thesis and it helped me to get more insights in the domain of congenital heart disease and to get the first empirical um, studies done in that domain by myself and, and the group I was working with. One study was about um, what it means to live with a congenital heart disease. So we were getting insights in the living, in the lived experiences of these patients. A second study was on the level of knowledge. What do they know and what were the gaps in their knowledge? And a third study was on healthcare utilization and healthcare expenditures. And these three studies helped me to um, kind of translate this into the role of an advanced practice nurse in adult congenital heart disease. I learned what are needs of our patients and it helped me to think what can I do about that? If I'm working as a nurse with these patients, what can we do to improve? These three studies also helped me to design the study for my PhD work. By doing these studies, I came across the concept of quality of life. And I found that little was known about quality of life in adults with congenital heart disease. So, in the year 2000, I started with my PhD and in uh, 2004, I was able to defend it. And the title of this PhD was Quality of Life in Adults with Congenital Heart Disease Beyond the Quantity of Life. One of the conclusions of my PhD was that persons with congenital heart disease can have an excellent quality of life and their quality of life is often better than that of healthy individuals. This was for the first time that equality of quality of life or even a better quality of life was found in uh, people with congenital heart disease. And when I just defended my thesis uh, at the reception, Professor Wim Dana came to me. Professor Dana was the then cardiac congenital surgeon um, in our hospital. And he said, I'm so happy to hear this because this shows that my work was worth it. This shows that I was not only able to um, make these patients surviving, but also was able to, to give them a certain quality of their life. This is information that everyone should know and especially the parents of children that are just diagnosed. And his excitement, his enthusiasm about these findings made me thinking like, this is not just a study that was nice to do and that was interesting for me. This is indeed something that may shape uh, the care provision. This is something that should land in the clinical arena. At the time that I was defending my thesis, um, I was definitely not alone. Around that time, there were five PhDs in adult congenital heart disease uh, that graduated, uh, which showed that indeed in, in different countries, more and more people uh, got interested in this domain and started doing research in congenital heart disease. Five in adult congenital heart disease. Um, in pediatric cardiology, we saw a similar evolution. Also, more and more people were starting master theses, research projects, PhDs in pediatric cardiology. And due to the fact that there was an increased interest in research in this area, we often got questions like, okay, I want to do something in congenital heart disease. What is a topic that I can investigate? And it was difficult for, for us as 
researchers in this arena to say, okay, this is a topic or that is a topic uh, to, to be investigated next. And that is the reason why in 2010 we decided with a group of international nurse researchers and clinicians in adult congenital heart disease to develop an international research agenda for adult congenital heart disease nursing. We wanted to uh, consult different experts, people working in the field of adult congenital heart disease nursing. But first, first we conducted a literature review. And this is the flowchart of this review. What is important to see here is that in 2010, we were able to identify 101 articles in PubMed that were written by nurse researchers in adult congenital heart disease and uh, 38 papers that were written by uh, nurse researchers in pediatric cardiology. When focusing more on adult congenital heart disease, we saw there were nine editorials, eight conference abstracts, and most important, 84 full articles. Of the conference abstracts and the full articles, uh, the majority, or close to, to half of them, uh, were reviewed, uh, reports, viewpoints, and the remaining articles were empirical studies. 30 of which used quantitative design, 12 a qualitative design, uh, two case studies and two psychometric studies. When looking a bit more on the content, on the topic that has been investigated in these studies, 10 of the studies were about quality of life. So this was really a hot topic at that moment. Nine studies looked at illness experiences and psychosocial issues. Seven looked at knowledge and education. Four at transfer and transition. Four at health behaviors. Three at pregnancy and GYN issues. Two at organization of care. And then there were some other issues that were, were uh, addressed by one study each. This list of topics already gave an indication on what were people doing at that time uh, in terms of research, but it also helped us to design a questionnaire for a Delphi study. An Delphi study that we uh, shared with 37 um, colleagues worldwide and we got their answers. And their answers helped us to make a priority list, to make a research agenda on congenital heart disease nursing. And this priority list looked at as follows. We also were able to see to what extent is there agreement in the level of importance of these topic, topics. And topics that were both important and where there was an agreement between the experts uh, of the Delphi study were the, these ones. Knowledge and education, outcomes of advanced practice nursing, quality of life, transfer and transition, illness perceptions or illness experiences and psychosocial issues. These were the top five topics that should be investigated in according to this nursing research agenda. When you look back to it from today, then you see that a lot of these things have happened. Indeed, a lot of studies have been conducted on knowledge and education, on quality of life, on transfer and transition. On the other hand, there are other topics that are uh, addressed to a lesser extent. For instance, outcomes of advanced practice nurses or uh, end-of-life issues, these are still under studied issues. Another aspect when looking at, these research, uh, at this research is that most, if not all, the studies were observational. 
And we know if we really want to shape the care, if we re really want to have an impact on care provision, we need intervention studies. So it was on one hand a pity to see that um, we were kind of stuck in, in the observation studies and we needed to move towards the intervention studies. At the same time, it is not a problem that uh, at that time we only had observational studies. And the reason is as such. When you look at the framework for complex interventions from the Medical Research Council in UK, they say if you are developing and evaluating a complex intervention, and this is what we as nurses are almost always do, um, if you, if you develop such a complex intervention, you don't do this at your kitchen table and start a randomized control uh, trial the day after. You need to do or you need to have a lot of empirical preparatory work. And this is exactly where all these observational studies on quality of life, on transfer and transition, uh, where they are helpful. These observational studies were able to inform the development of interventions which are later on tested in randomized controlled trials. And yes, indeed, if you look at randomized controlled trials in congenital heart disease today, you can see that there are trials ongoing or even either uh, are already published, trials regarding uh, physical activity, regarding transition, regarding psychosocial support and counseling, feeding in children with congenital heart disease, baby massage after cardiac surgery, or hospital discharge after surgery. And for sure, these intervention studies would not have been able without the observational studies of the decade before. But now the question raises, what's next? What is the way to go? And I highly uh, recommend that we continue doing intervention studies. We need to continue looking at the effectiveness of the interventions. For instance, um, the effectiveness of uh, exercise training uh, to increase the exercise capacity of our patients or uh, the evaluation of a transition program. Is this really effective? But in addition to effectiveness research, I also would recommend to do comparative effectiveness. And Comparative effectiveness research is not addressing the question, is this intervention working, yes or no, but rather what is working, for whom, in which circumstances. For instance, if we know that uh, a transition program is effective, then you can wonder if we translate this if, uh, transition program to a group session, is it as effective or if we are giving this on a distance using uh, digital tools is it then as effective are people with cognitive disorders uh, equally helped with the transition program than people without and this kind of questions can be addressed by comparative effectiveness research when we are looking at uh, observational studies, we don't need more single center studies. Uh, we need more international, uh, inter, uh, multi center, and international studies. And the reason is as such most of the studies so far have been done in the West, and Asia is following in the meantime. But it means that the mainstay of the studies are applicable for the Western countries and are not necessarily applicable for patients in low and middle income countries. So if we really want to have an impact on the care globally, we need to better understand what is the global variation uh, of outcomes 
and I'm not only talking about mortality and morbidity, but also nurse sensitive outcomes. What is the situation in these low and middle income countries? This is also a target for investigation. And of course, there are some new or understudied uh, domains. Prenatal care. This is now um, common practice. Prenatal diagnosis, this is not something new. We also know in the meantime that uh, parents who are diagnosed with uh, uh, an unborn child with a congenital heart disease, they have particular needs. Now is the time to translate this into care. How can we develop a care uh, model that is dealing with these needs of these parents? And then subsequently, uh, is this care model also um, effective? Neurodevelopmental issues. Increasing evidence have shown that indeed there are neurodevelopmental issues and we are often looking at the cardiac surgery or uh, the hypoxemic uh, status uh, before birth that, uh, that is explaining these uh, neurodevelopmental issues. But there are also other predictors for this uh, dysfunction, predictors where nurses can play a role. And we need to identify these nurse uh, targets for addressing the neuro neurodevelopmental issues. Our patient group is increasingly aging, um, and this is great. These, this is the price of success, so to speak. However, we also see that there is a certain level of accelerated aging. Certain age-related problems are occurring uh, more frequently and sooner in people with congenital heart disease than in non-afflicted uh, uh, afflicted, uh, people. So we need to better understand how comes that there is this accelerated aging and to what extent this is translated into frailty status. End of life care. We are doing our utmost best to keep our patients alive, but we are losing many of them. And sometimes it's sudden, nothing could have been done to prevent it or to take care of that. But there are patients that are uh, having a trajectory of dying. And it's in these patients that we could deliver specific end-of-life care. How should this be done? What are the needs? This is still uh, a domain to be investigated. And then the final idea for future research is organization models. The group of congenital heart disease patients is increasingly growing. And it, it has an impact on the care provision. It has an impact on the teams. And there comes a time that the teams will be saturated. And the question then is, who are the patients that still have to remain in tertiary, high specialized care? Or are there certain patient groups that can be followed up by the regional cardiologist in a very safe and efficient way as well? How to organize this care? Also here, we don't have a lot of evidence to support uh, what is best for our patients. And of course, you can think of other uh, domains, other issues that can be investigated in congenital heart disease as well. Like I said, when I started uh, my research career in congenital heart disease, I had a feeling that this is wasteland with only a few green spots. But when you look at this today, it is flourishing. And it's great to see how many people found their way to research in congenital heart disease, both at pediatric side as at adult congenital heart disease. And the best is still yet to come. Um, as more people are finding their way to our uh, domain, 
the more research can be done and the better we are able to care for our patients. And of course, we are not alone and you don't start on your own. We have the privilege that we can stand on the shoulder of giants. And when I was starting in the example that I gave in, in the late uh, 90s, there were a few people, a few giants for me, who I could rely on and uh, whose shoulders I could stand uh, on. Today, there are many more people that can serve as a role model, uh, that can help you, that can mentor you and try to identify those people that can be meaningful for you um, in taking up research in congenital heart disease. And talking about giants, Florence Nightingale, she was a giant. She was a giant in nursing and nursing research. And therefore, uh, it is self-evident that the APC took her as uh, the example to give this named lecture. Once again, it was a privilege for me to give this uh, uh, Florence Nightingale lecture. Thank you very much.